Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. What up, everybody? This is Jason Lee, and this is Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. And I'm Melissa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. Yep, it's DJ Damas. Let's get the show started. Hey, everybody click fast to see what's going to happen, and we don't know, but Moni Slaughter is here, Ooh. finally. <laughs> I know. I know people are like, oh, my God. I mean, I hear the popcorn and the tea <laughs> right now right. because we have a lot of history with Moniz here at Hollywood Unlocked. We do. Okay, you so. You do. Well. Yeah. You guys have a lot. Well. You know what I mean? We all have a lot of history. I think I'm slightly flustered, Jason, and I've never. Really? Yeah. No, well, relax. Let me, okay, get relaxed while I just tee up how okay. we got here. It's, well, it's good to finally meet you. Nice we've never, you. Yeah, I don't I think know. we've ever met before. No, we haven't. I. You're extraordinarily beautiful in Thank person. you. I actually um, am glad to see you. Oh, okay. thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate I would, that. I wanted to reach out, but I was like, I don't want to feel like a groupie. No, and no. Like, I, yeah. you know, I uh, came Michelle. She sent me flowers. We'd never met before. Wait, honey, they're not friends. We, well, we, we, I mean, it was still it, 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 it was still a nice gesture from somebody that I had never met before. We met on the show here, mm -hmm. and it was it was lovely. Okay. I would have before we start dropping out names because anything could happen here. It's Fourth of <laughs> July is around the corner. Goddamn it! And I just want us to just get out of here peaceful. Okay. <laughs> okay. So while you gather that, let me kind of bring everybody up to speed so yeah. i ran into monice at, at cardi's fashion nova party mm -hmm. and i said and it literally mm -hmm. was i was going up the stairs and yeah. she was literally coming down the stairs i was there for that were how, you how yeah. long ago was this this was a few like, months ago, few months ago. Okay. yeah mm -hmm. and we ran into each other and it was one of those moments where i don't think we'd been face to face mm -hmm. uh since you know all of the stuff that's that we're going to get into today mm -hmm. right and uh, we we stopped for a second to make, you know, I had to make sure I wasn't going to get jumped and she wanted to make sure there was no cameras. I don't know. We It was a pause. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. a pause. Well, Jason was like, can we talk? And he grabbed my hand and I was like. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, she, I mean, she definitely in a nice, very beautiful way looked at me like, you bitch ass nigga, what? But it, it, the translation <laughs> was, yes, we can talk. And I said to her, I said, you know, I'm at a point in my life where I want to grow past drama. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to have beefs with people unless you owe me money or you fuck one of my niggas, right? I don't want to have no beef. <laughs> right. And so oh I thought it was an opportunity to be the to be a, a big man, no pun intended, don't fat shame me, to say, hey, what's up? You know, we talk about you a lot on the show. Mm -hmm. We've had our issues. We, you know, let's talk about it, but let's do it on the show. Mm -hmm. And let's do it on the show because I feel like she deserves the opportunity to air her feelings of how, you know, I've behaved or mm -hmm. what I've thought. I have, you know, my thoughts or feelings, but mm -hmm. also to just like get get through it, you know, because I know she's been on a path of really trying to figure out how happiness and mm -hmm. get into a positive place. And mm -hmm. I mean, when those two things intersected, it was perfect timing. Mm -hmm. What wasn't perfect timing was then I had, you know, you had your unfortunate situation mm -hmm, and then April Jones popped in and mm -hmm. then it was like the wild, wild west on Instagram. So <laughs> I didn't, we weren't able to move forward right away. Right, right. But that girl's no longer here. So here we are. <clears throat> right. Okay. So okay. Does, does that set it up? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So you and I both found ourselves on a, a, a little ratchet show called Love and Hip Hop. <laughs> <laughs> Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. Okay, um, <laughs> we're on a show called Love and Hip Hop, and uh, we had never met really and had a real interaction with one another. We'd, we'd crossed paths a couple of times, but we'd never actually stopped and like, like you said, actually had substantial interaction. But we more so never had any beef. Right. Mm -hmm. We never had bad words, you and Correct. I. Mm -hmm. um, we never exchanged any negativeness. It was just, we were in a show. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, people blame the show. The show creates drama, but we all participate. You Correct. know, nothing, the show doesn't come, doesn't say, do this to Monies, do this Correct. so and so, at least not to me. Right. So I own everything that happened, right? So uh, I, I'll just say kind of what I thought happened, and then mm -hmm. I'll give you the floor to say without interruption, whatever you want. The team in the chat group had said they had ran into you. They felt like you were rude to them. Uh, they felt like you didn't want to talk to them, and and that and that you single single handedly said, "Is this Hollywood or not?" With Jason Lee, oh yeah, yeah, no, I'm I'm cool. Whatever happened, and so my re immediate reaction was, "Well, I don't have no problem with her, mm -hmm. but I'm in love and hip hop, and I don't know what they're filming, so maybe there is a problem." So I reached out to you to say, "What's the issue?" Like I heard this happen. This was me calling you directly on the phone, Correct. and I didn't really feel like you were apologetic about it all. I felt like you were just like, you know, you had your rationale for it, but I still feel like with my staff on a red carpet, they literally, literally are an extension of me and I expect people to respect them. So what happened was I then went in outside the show, mm -hmm. mentioned to Princess, who, she who I knew she had beef with, but mm -hmm. who I was cool with, mm -hmm. that I had this receipt. Mm -hmm. 
the next week I was in a scene in the show the, the, it, the it was then brought into the conversation. Mm-hmm. So I was like, fuck. Then we had a second call. I think I called you back. And I called her to tell her that this had happened, but that I had no intention to ever put out a sex tape because that's just not something that so we do. So that's the receipt that you had? There was a sex tape. Mm-hmm. Okay. There was a sex tape. <clears throat> and uh, so then there was there was a lot of, of course, emotion from that. She felt a certain particular way about I'm it, which sure I understand. She did. Mm-hmm. And then I got served legal papers. I'm like, what the fuck I get a legal paper for, you know? And so once I got the legal paper and it became all of that, and then we were in all these scenes, it just kind of blossomed into this bigger issue that she felt a particular way for even though i in my mind knew there was never going to be a release i'd never give it to production it was never going to be passed around to to the to the cast so animosity grew there was of course okay yeah no i'm I'm understandably so but of course at the time i wasn't like in her mind or in her feelings about it It was Mm -hmm. just like you know love and hip-hop is war Mm. and people use all types of things Mm -hmm. to win an argument it's like hunger games why wage war on someone who never even announced that they wanted to enter into a duel with you like that that from where i sit and i'm sorry no go ahead ahead. no go ahead so the first interaction that you and i actually had was um i had made a comment on the shade room that was the first thing and it was about two of our no longer cast Mm -hmm. mates um but that was miles and milan yeah Mm -hmm. one who was allegedly um down low this was the alleged Mm -hmm. this Mm -hmm. is what was Mm -hmm. happening i didn't know any (laughs) one of the three parties involved before them joining the show so let me just say that okay but i had been attacked all first season all second season Mm -hmm. and so this girl that was you know involved with their love triangle amber and yeah Mm -hmm. she um you know, she and I had kind of connected and I felt bad for her. Say that to say, I stuck up for her one day when the promo for the season started to run and I made a comment about um, the statistics and the numbers of how black women at that time, Mm -hmm. um, which wasn't that long ago, were contracting HIV and AIDS more from from down low partners. Correct. Then mm-hmm. they were from dirty needles. Mm-hmm. Now my grandmother from down low men. From down yeah. low men, yes. Okay. I didn't specify it to what race these men were, whether they're married, unmarried, just gay and not saying it, or trisexual, whatever. Um, and I never, when it comes to things like that, speak out of turn or pocket. My mm-hmm. grandmother is a doctor. Mm-hmm. I fact checked before I made that statement Mm -hmm. and i also followed it up by saying and don't get it twisted a heterosexual woman who steps out on her husband Mm -hmm. one time and then comes back home poses the same threat as the down low brother Mm -hmm. so jason and i hadn't spoken you and i hadn't spoken immediately after that then the red carpet thing happened Mm -hmm. and that whole thing was you had actually definitely updating my memory because now now it's bringing back a lot more that you had actually done and run a story about princess and i okay and that was the interview with princess right Mm -hmm. um and what no one knew and what a lot of people don't know about me is i grew up in hollywood Mm -hmm. my dad is a 10-time grammy award-winning artist and producer and arranger Mm -hmm. and i have known the norwood family since i was 15. brandy and ray j Mm -hmm. the whole family Mm -hmm. and um there was a lot going on behind the scenes Mm -hmm. and so that interview had actually led to my mom brandy and myself being in a group text where brandy was like i love you you're my you're my twin this 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 that and the third and i'm here talking to you i'm defending you and you follow what i'm saying blah 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 and i said you know what for the sake of the familial re- ties and relationship between you and my mom i will stop talking about ray and princess um which stemmed from season two on the rooftop princess which she recently apologized to me for um princess was supposed to be confronting tiara princess did not confront tiara right away she turned to me and went in on me as a mom Mm -hmm. went in telling me how i had a, a baby with a man that doesn't give a fuck about me or my son um and at the time i didn't drink or smoke so when you do stuff like that to me i don't ever forget Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So now fast forward to you did the interview. I'm telling Brandy 
and my mom like, all right, I'm gonna put it to bed. You go back, you tell princess, drop it, right? She doesn't want to apologize. She doesn't want to own up to it at that at that point. But that was our starting point. That was where the beef between princess and I actually started. Mm -hmm. And um, it was snowballing privately. Mm -hmm. I go to the Amber Rose emoji mm -hmm. app launch thingy. And that's where I saw Jason's team on the red carpet. Right off the heels now, of mind all you, I of don't these have, things. I don't have all that context. He doesn't know this yet. Mm -hmm. So I said, is this Hollywood Unlocked? This is Jason Lee's thing um, show, right? And they were like, yeah. And I said, I'm good. It's better if I just don't say shit. Gotcha. And so Jason called me and I, I told him that. And I said, you know, it was, wasn't anything personal. This is what just happened. And I just didn't want to say anything. I didn't want them to ask me anything about it because that is their job. But I do want to go back to something you said because you did add context that I totally forgot about um, at the time because I literally have put this behind me. I know we've, 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 we've put it behind us personally, but I mean, we still haven't done this, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, as a black gay man who was in a group home with my counselor, Edwin Fleming, who did pass from AIDS, mm -hmm. um, HIV AIDS is a very sensitive subject in our community. Yeah. I didn't know at the time that you were a lesbian or that you liked women. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's I didn't know you. You didn't know me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know your history. You didn't know mine. So absent conversation and people don't realize when we film the show, we are separated for the most part where we can't talk to. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to talk to one another. Mm -hmm. right. So when I saw the comment about, you know, you know, and you said allegedly, and I totally understand what you're saying. Like producers of love and hip hop produce what they're told by the cast. Mm -hmm. You're told by the cast something, and it's a great story, and it's your story that you own because you sign and say this is your story. They're gonna tell your story. Now, if all of us that are around Hollywood say, "Hold on a minute, that nigga gay," uh, and we know that nigga gay, but he tells producers otherwise, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And I think at the time when people were really like reveling over love and hip hop, showing a gay couple for black the first time, two black that. men, mm -hmm. privately I felt some type of way, cause here I am a black gay man, and I'm like, I ain't participating in that shit. And I didn't feel, there's not one scene with me and them except for the reunion. Right. And then when you left the comment about, um, you know, the statistics of whatever, I felt, not knowing you, mm -hmm. that that was a dig. That that was like, because we're not talking about a couple that's talking about contracting HIV. Correct. It was just an unnecessary fact thrown into a conversation that then became spun into, the fuck is she talking about? So mm -hmm. I already in my mind had developed an opinion and I was like, okay, you know, th this is about to become some real crazy conversations on set or mm -hmm. in our show mm -hmm. and I'm ready. So I was really defensive also, I think, in the show because I never knew, you never know where people's coming from. Mm -hmm. right. So that's, that context was helpful because I did forget about that. Yeah. So moving forward, Jason and I spoke um, after following Amber Rose's event and mm -hmm. the interaction between myself and Hollywood Unlocked on the carpet. Mm -hmm. And so I thought everything was okay. So mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like going along and then Drew, <clears throat> my baby daddy shows up to tell Lil me. Little Fizz. Yeah, okay. Teeny Fizzle Pop shows up to tell me at Stevie's house, as a matter of fact, that this is this tape is floating around. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing about the tape. There's this whole discrepancy about I knew, I didn't know, I did not know. Mm -hmm. And I was mad at producers. I was mad at him because if anything else, you're the father of my child. Mm -hmm. You call me and you give me a heads up that this is headed my way mm -hmm. because you shot a scene with Max Lux how long ago with him coming to you with this information. So he doesn't owe me protect, you know, that kind of respect and protection. Neither does Max. Neither does little Brandy. Neither does Princess. Neither does Ray. But you do. Mm -hmm. as the father of my child. Mm -hmm. And so for you to spring that on me on camera was whack, number one. Number two, I was like nine days post-op for my boobs. So I'm high, it's cold outside, I'm constipated from the Percocet, and I'm literally trying to like process all of this. My wig was crooked. I knew I sounded crazy. <laughs> I was mad at them for putting me outside with a fucking piano and a bonfire, and it wasn't enough to keep me warm. Yeah, great background, though. Horrible. Uh, you know, great background, but horrible. <laughs> I was mad at the Vogue. I was mad at all of it. You mm -hmm. know, now you drop this bomb on me on a Friday night. How the fuck am I supposed to lawyer up? And my first, the, the next thing they wanted me to shoot was on a Monday morning and they wanted to send Lamb to my house at 6 a.m. to shoot with Jason. So I started, re the only reason I knew it was Jason, I started refusing. I'm not going anywhere, shooting anything. Somebody better tell me <clears throat> all of it. And so I immediately called my attorney in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, this is beyond, 
is above me now, bitch. We need a litigator. <laughs> so we went to the team that did the Hulk Hogan takedown case. Mm -hmm. Side note, I hired that attorney after you sent me okay. that letter. <laughs> and they were like this, but that shit was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so I said, you know, my entertainment attorney, an entertainment attorney was like, don't even get in the car, don't even do glam until we say so. And then the litigator said the same thing. And then my criminal attorney said the same thing. All three of who are on a retainer. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, all right. You know, and so everyone got their paperwork. The network got paperwork. Jason got paperwork. Literally everyone that I knew to be involved at that time was put on notice. Right. I didn't even know that there was a such thing as a revenge porn statute until this happened. Mm. So I have a whole baby with someone. He never got a naked picture of me. I don't have any ass, you know, so he never got pictures of me in thongs and his, like nothing. We never did cyber sex, but you I mean, know? The, the sex tape, I mean, the tape, you've seen the tape. I've not then. seen never the seen tape. It. Okay, okay well, quick, quick, who's in the tape? This, we're not even going to say okay, his name. This, this is somebody who's, who I know personally. The point is, is that the, the, the tape was not secretly recorded. It was, I think, you know, I mean, I don't know if you've seen it. You say you haven't I seen haven't. it. I haven't. You know, but, but let me just dispel this, whether you knew or didn't know or anything. Before we even get deeper into the conversation, I wanted to have this conversation because I owed you a public apology for that. I mean, I think, you know, I, I wasn't thinking humiliation or you know all of that because and, and i'll be clear about war war for me isn't you throw a bomb at me war is you pull your pistol out and i felt like on the red carpet with my team because of the context of the show and all the online stuff and not knowing you that you know you were pulling your pistol out well, and, let, can i interject sure. right there well wait, but let me let me finish this thought because i just want and then i'll be mm -hmm. done i'm done with that part i never was thinking about how it would be humiliating. I didn't think about you having a kid and all of that. I just thought, let me go ahead and just let her know. Because at the time, I felt, and I haven't, you know, I've come to know you a little bit now, I really felt like at some 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 points, like you've been a bully to people. I feel like sometimes, you know, you, you know, you, 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 you throw a bomb and hide your hand or you become like the victim, but somehow you're like always in shit. So at the time, my opinion of you, like as you know, a lot of people have had, is okay. you always start some shit or you always in some shit. Um, I never supported attacking you as a mom because my mother struggled. In fact, we've talked about mm -hmm. that on, on the show here. But I did feel like to some of the people on the cast and storylines that like, you were a bully. And I was like, I'm not about to let her come after me and my team and this and that. So that was the context. Not making an excuse of it. Mm -hmm. But I want to just say, like, for that part, I do apologize because until I spoke to you about it, I really didn't know how it affected you. And even though I didn't have any interest to put it out. I could have came up with a whole bunch of other shit on you, you know, to, to like. That's fine. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, I'm the first person to own everything. Mm -hmm. And I, I get that a lot where people think that I'm an aggressor and then I like to throw the rock, hide my hand, play victim. Most of what happens to me is not done on camera. And I think people do that to me because they know that I'm reactive. Well, you pulled up and fought Alexis in the parking lot. Why Time out. <laughs> Why y'all didn't one, film that? One thing at a time. People think that I'm the aggressor. But like, you, you, no. You stand up for yourself. Absolutely. And okay. I'm vicious. Well, why do people mm. feel otherwise? I'm vicious. Why do people feel otherwise? Listen, I end up vindicated in every situation. Mm. Because when I say something, it is a fact. I am rooted in Hollywood. I have known these girls, these guys, since we were teenagers, little Brandy and I came up together. But didn't you we feel, were in a group together. But didn't you feel calling little Brandy's baby ugly? Like you, like, let, let's stop there. You're a mother. I yes. have a mom. You, okay. Did you feel like that was low? Here's the thing. Let's again, because I I get sidetracked. I get. Oh all no, the this time. show we jump around, baby. Okay, so okay. Just follow, so follow, just follow, from follow my the brain. Team. Let's finish out the the tape. The okay. tape for me. I'm not God, you're not God. I don't go after people because my I feel like they're this or they're that. Mm -hmm. Not liking the way that I responded on the red carpet and we had a conversation and I was apologetic and I did break it down and I'll apologize again. Um, sincerely, maybe the apology, you know, you didn't feel like it was genuine, but I am the type of person who if you've never crossed me and I've never crossed you, I don't have any reason to offer you a fake apology, right? 
So I don't lose anything by saying, you know what, damn, we have so many people in common. The most important thing to me is my family. That's how I know you. I would not want to complicate. I don't, you know, your ties with them. I don't want them mad at me because I live in the real world, right? And I have lived my real life on this show for very many years. And I came in at the bottom. I did not have any help. I wasn't on good terms with my family. I was going through this journey on my own, hoping that someone else could relate or hoping that someone would be like, damn, she didn't fuck, lie, cheat, steal, rob her way to the top. I worked hard. So for me, it's like, if I looked into a camera and said, fuck me six ways to Sunday till I'm blue in the face, it does not give that person who recorded me, you, Prince, anyone to to exploit me in that way. Well, just like if you have a problem with Brandy, you don't get to call her kid ugly. That's true. But this is the and, thing. So, and, and, the, that's, and that's but very here, but true. But Monique, so here's what we have to be clear. And this is the problem I have with people that this is why I stay in my but house. Jason, this why, but Jason, whether or not I, stay, I do it, this it why doesn't I stay matter. You can be, you can be, dis, you can feel like that's a whatever type mm -hmm. of behavior, right? And I can, and I respect that feeling. I could like totally respect it. Now, what I, all I'm saying is when it comes to that, the tape situation, sure. that's all I felt about it. And I do feel like you need to think ahead if you have children and you don't want to run that risk of your vagina being seen on the internet, then you don't even put yourself in a in such a vicarious position. You don't even put yourself in a position for a man, woman, whatever, to get mad, turn, flip, give it out, put it on the... We live in an era now where I say it all the time and it's not a matter of if our children see it, but when they see it. And when they see it, are they gonna be proud of where they come from and who they are? Now to touch on the brand. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not I'm not gonna justify the tape. The tape we've already covered, the apology's been sent. Um, and I don't double apologize, so I'm gonna just put that out no, there. Okay. But let me say this: either. this is where I, I struggle because this is where me and Masika fell out. You know, during the reunion, I felt like because oh, you guys um, were friends and she was defending you, and you know, I'm okay with being loyal. But me and her friends, if I go off and call somebody's kid ugly or talk about somebody's child or whatever, she's gonna check me on it and call me on it. Mm -hmm. She's not gonna blindly loyal, loyally uh, just follow whatever I say because I say it. And Everyone she's my friend. told me I was wrong. But, but, but what I thought was you didn't get you were wrong. And, and, and I this knew is, I was wrong. But did you ever apologize for that? No. But that's, do you think they're owed an apology? I absolutely do. And that's what I was getting at. In terms of that, the children are innocent. Mm -hmm. And mine's been a topic of discussion for m many years now for people that I never sent for. I agree. Not, so, not, for, not from us, though. No, but not I do from agree. you guys. I do but. Agree. People, have, people, weaponized, who don't have, people kids. have weaponized your struggle as a, in, as a single and mother. And it's the only, that's the silver bullet. You can call me a hoe. You can call me whatever you want. Broke, ugly, built like a 12-year-old boy. Whatever you want. A walking black and mild. I didn't hurt it all. <laughs> A walking black and mile. Who called it, you that? I don't. I don't know. Somebody <laughs> on the social. You don't look networks. like a walking black and mile. No. So that doesn't bother me. But how fucking dare you? I don't like. I could be one of these moms. It's like, hey, bitch, I'm trying to go uh, trap me a rapper. Can you keep my baby tonight? Never. I. And, you know, my heart is with my family as dysfunctional as we are, as much as we go through. And I say that to say that when I said I'm not terminating my pregnancy, my parents were like, well, you're having a baby. Mm -hmm. We're not. And it's not easy. And so there was no. So I do you feel people know that that's your trigger and they just use that to get absolutely. you to go And so and I get I take offense to that when you know me. Max Lux knows me. Yeah. Brand, little Brandy knows me, nigga, since I was 15. You know me. Yeah. So for you to cross many boundaries when we didn't have any issues. It's one thing, like you said, to defend your friends. It's one thing to stick up for your people. It's another, though, to just be a fucking Tasmanian devil. And so you you cross the, the, the baby line with me off camera, not just on camera, but off camera. 
I kept my cool and you go and you go and you go. And that's what I say. Everybody knows I'm reactive. And everyone knows I'm going to smash, rip the shit and be like, I did it. But don't I you said but, it. But don't you feel attacking a senseless kid is, I do. is as low I as playing is, is as low, low as playing the field with the sex tape. Absolutely. Okay. And so at the end no, not that low. Why not? But, but why not? Because I feel like it wasn't underhanded. I said it to directly to you whether you knew this was coming or not and that's a, not a nice but a thing child to say a child can't defend themselves exactly though. that's not that's not a nice thing to say mm -hmm. about an innocent life that was created by love mm -hmm. out of love i'm assuming by these two people mm -hmm. um and the child has done nothing to me right so but that this is isn't not really, nice. this isn't really like an eye for an eye kind of thing you know, no, like I'm, it's not. I I'm, I'm, I'm feeling where you're coming from in terms of like the detriment that a sex, that a leaked sex tape could cause lasting. to your life, and a comment that rolls off of your tongue because in the heat of they're, anger. They're, you no, know what no, I'm no, 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 And I'm no, just no, you guys, no, listen, you no, guys are unpacking a no, lot of but stuff here. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, no, mm. that kid did not make themselves look that way mm -hmm. so it's different like if I'm, if I'm if i'm fucking somebody whether i'm filming they're filming we're filming we have this whole production set up that's one thing i'm not saying one is greater than the other mm -hmm. what i'm trying to get at is the taking of responsibility and right? i'm taking accountability no but, but here's what hear me out <laughs> The taking of responsibility, the taking of accountability, acknowledging without explaining. I'm, I mean, I'm giving you an explanation because I feel you're old one. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily. Maybe Brandy and Max are old an explanation of the kid, or Tina Knowles was posted. Yeah, kid. I don't know. I'm not trying to even justify the tape. I'm saying I'm not was justifying wrong. anything. I'm saying I recognize that that was wrong. Mm -hmm. With all that being said, I apologize. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, and again, this is not an explanation this is not a, a woe is me this is me taking accountability and also bringing awareness i was in a very low place for a very long time very unhappy very like on the fence because i had at that point started to be honest about my mental health status and the fact that i had gone so long untreated thinking that i could handle it and so were you I in there were you in therapy then I was in therapy, but I was not consistent. Mm -hmm. And I also hadn't taken medication mm -hmm. since, my God, like Cameron was maybe like two. So have you been diagnosed? You Yeah. You were diagnosed bipolar. I, no. No, by, okay. I'm, I'm clarification because I <laughs> no, don't I know. Because that's what people, that's yeah, what I've so read. Yeah, so my baby daddy said that I was bipolar. Mm -hmm. My mom said that I was bipolar. Mm -hmm. And my mom said I was borderline, had bo borderline personality, personality disorder. Mm -hmm. She said that publicly? Um, no, Drew said it, my baby daddy said it publicly. Okay. So when I, so uh, let me wrap out the Brit. So I apologize for okay. calling Brandis ugly. He, and he I did not deserve that. And I apologize for the sex tape. And we're going to leave both of those there on the table and we're going to, we're going to move, move past on. it. Okay. okay. Moving forward. When I was pregnant, I think I was stressed out. Mm -hmm. I was coming to the end of the relationship with Drew. Um, I had also that when you found out you were pregnant, you were coming to we the We were end? already broken up. Oh, wow. I, I found out maybe like a four or five days after we broke up. Oh, wow. But that relationship was the first time. I'm not an affectionate person by nature. I'm very guarded. Normally, I'm always very defensive. And when he came into the picture, I opened up a lot. I was like touchy feely. I was able to kind of articulate myself, my feelings a little more because people also don't know that my dad that I'm always talking about is my stepdad. Mm -hmm. um, but he's raised me since infancy. Mm -hmm. My biological disposition, my genetic <laughs> disposition is not very communicative. Mm -hmm. And as I'm learning more about where I actually come from, this is a problem. So side note, that that picture of Drew in the kitchen in his underwear, is that all real or is that stuffed? I just thought that. I don't know. I don't why. know. I don't even remember what it was like, to be completely honest. Damn, I thought I would get some information. Okay, let's let's go no. back to the pregnancy the, the and, diagnosis, your, and your diagnosis. Yeah. diagnosis. Yeah. So I started to really like struggle towards the end. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like, oh my God, I hate my life. It was just like I can't take it. Like I didn't know it was gonna be like this. And so around the seventh month of the pregnancy, I had been begging my OBGYN, please just take this baby out, put him in the incubator. I have great insurance. He's covered under it for a year. She was like, I can't do that. Like, <laughs> it's illegal. Like, we can't just take your baby and mm -hmm. put him in the, you know, yeah. incubator. Yeah. So I was like, I'm not going to make it. Well, 
come to find out postpartum depression runs in my family. Mm -hmm. And so they were trying to take early preventative measures, but the relationship between Drew and I had been so volatile. And so I was angry towards the end. Mm -hmm. And my mom is the type of person where if she can't make sense of something, there's something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't understand why she and I couldn't get along, why I couldn't see things from her perspective, why, why, why. So she looked up, you know, because I'm always fighting with my brother and sister and like I'm the I'm rebelling and I'm this and I'm that. So you, something wrong with you, you know. Mm -hmm. So she looked up, uh, I guess, some white lady I was speaking at a conference and she was like, look at this. And the lady was on YouTube. Mm hmm. So she's like, this reminds me of you. She has a disorder called borderline personality disorder. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, or maybe, you know, I've been researching bipolar disorder and your highs and your lows and your ups. Mind you, I'm pregnant. Yeah. So Hormones. she took me to not a therapist, but a psychiatrist. Where you and, can get drugs. Right. And Drew was with me. It was Drew, myself, my mom and my dad. Mm hmm. And my mom said, she's got BPD and she's got bipolar disorder and this is why we think this. Doctor asked me no questions, said, well, how far along are you? And I was at like seven and a half months. She said, oh yeah, well, you can take medication at seven months. So they started me on Prozac. Wow. The wow. Prozac <laughs> made me feel insane. <laughs> and she was like, you know, your body, your chemistry, it'll level out. Da, 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 da. Well, that made me feel crazy. But didn't you feel like you had a say so on whether or not you took the medication? Because I did see like there were some scenes where your mother and Drew, they have a very interesting relationship where I felt like she's even crossed the line at certain times in her yeah. relationship with him about you. Um, I, I you know. I was yeah. gonna say, it sounds like you have a medical malpractice suit on your hands. Well, like, cause in, in a way, you were being forced. And and well, the forcefulness of the scenario was that my the prerequisite for living at home with my parents was I had to stay on the medication, mm. and so I did. Wow. And so I kept saying this is making me feel crazy. So we found the therapist that I'm still with now. So is, what was so it? So I get to Dr. Harrell and she's like, what you suffer from is uh, called the case of a, it's a case of a fucked up family dynamic and pregnancy <laughs> hormones. <laughs> These are her literal words. She's like, and pregnancy hormones. And anyone in your shoes would probably have lost it long before now. So yeah. I commend you. Yeah. Let's lower your dosage because you are, there's so many things going on here and there's a baby in there. And so she's like, well, Take the time once you've had the baby and you kind of like leveled out. Let's see how the medication feels and then let's properly diagnose you. Mm -hmm. Boom. That time comes. And my diagnosis turned out to be situational depression and social anxiety and ADHD on the lower end of the spectrum. Can I ask the most basic question possible? I have a couple of friends that have been on Love and Hip Hop and are no longer on there. And some of them talked about losing hair from the stress and, you know, anxiety issues and whatnot. Common sense would beg the question, what do you love about, what is it about being on the show that you continue to like doing? Or is, are you trapped in a contract? Like, I, I don't I, these are real, like these are real actual questions because it's like somebody who suffers from situational depression and this being such an intense atmosphere where you never know what's going to happen. Doesn't this seem counterproductive to mental health? It does. And so I made the choice when I had this situation with princess, um, a while back where I almost lost all common sense. Mm -hmm. I got to start taking some, like Jason said earlier, a level of accountability. Mm -hmm. If you know, if I know these things about myself, mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't really want to, it's, I signed a contract mm -hmm. to share my life, mm -hmm. to share my story and do it truthfully. And you're also a single mother. It's business. a job. It's I a mean, job. It pays and the bills. so, you know, when you want to go, and you can't, mm -hmm. and you are then faced with, do I return to a guaranteed job or do I sit out and run the risk of not being able to provide? I've been there already. That's fair. 
and, and it's a massive I have platform. a child it's now. A massive platform. I don't care. I don't give two shits about the platform. Mm-hmm. If I had known, na- if I knew then what well, I know now. If you didn't care, now, you wouldn't be pushing music. I mean, you do care about the platform. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. When I, I say I, I don't care, I mean it's not enough for me to sacrifice yeah. my sanity. Is what I mean. I'm grateful for the platform, and now that I've come to this place that I am now, I'm learning how to use it properly. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm. I get that. Yeah. So I'm grateful for that. There's but, been a lot of people who have not used the yeah, platform. Yeah, and the I best was one possible. of those. And I was one of those people. Mm-hmm. And so I've learned the difference and I'm just not there anymore. And so like, I am so grateful because, you know, a lot of people don't know I was walking to the grocery store when Mona called me, Mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. And I was working a nine to five, literally. Mm -hmm. And I was living with my parents, literally. And I'm open about those things, you know. But you're, so, you're great TV too. And, and yeah, they, you there, are. I mean, there've been a lot of people on Love and Hip Hop that I mean, you know, they come and go. You don't think about them anymore. They're back to sacking groceries at Rouse. You, you definitely <laughs> have built, you know, your own following in the show. The it's audience true. loves you. Fan favorite. You know, you, 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 you. <laughs> You, you have a really good way of letting a motherfucker have it when you need to stand up for yourself. So here I'm going transitioning into another question. <laughs> okay, so part of why this whole interview was delayed and why it took forever yes. to get you up here was because get to the meat and potatoes, unfortunately honey. you were in a near death accident. Yes. And I had, um, I feel like just a uh, chair with April Jones. April mm-hmm. Jones, you know, sweet girl, whatever. Um, the fans liked her. She had opinions when I wasn't here. When I got here, she didn't have any. So, mm-hmm. we, but that that's that's later in the show. Okay. So she was in the chair, and at the time, she took the chair, and I had made the commitment, literally, like at the same time, to you to come on the show. Right. Mm-hmm. I didn't want any conflict because both of y'all were talking about on site is going down, it's going down, mm-hmm. and then like later on, in the midst of her not working out, I found out well, you guys. Well, technically, become, what I said is I might slap her. That's what I said. Yeah, well, you tell a bitch I might slap you on site. That's what I said to you. I told her I felt like she deserved to be you did slapped, tell me but that. I told you, you I might slap her. You did, I'm, but but she I'm told me, but me. she told me she was gonna whoop your ass when she saw you. Oh, okay. So it didn't make sense for safety. We had a gun pulled on us here at Hollywood Unlocked. Yes, it's child. We yeah, didn't want to. We, did, we didn't want no feuds to go down. So we <laughs> we stalled you coming on the show because she was like saying how she was gonna whoop your ass this and whatever. Now, we just posted on Hollywood Unlocked her in between your baby daddy legs. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 public information at this point that the person who you had beef with, who who I thought the beef originated over her taking your kid to Chicago and having your kid lie to you about it never had anything. to Okay, can you please for the viewers and for people like me that mind their own business, bring us up to speed. So, you know, I'm long winded, so I'm going to do my best to make this very short. Go ahead. Okay. Drew and I have joint legal and joint physical custody on paper. Mm -hmm our holiday schedule is clearly mapped out on paper Mm -hmm. and Thanksgiving rolls around. Well, my grandmother, my mom's mom retired from the medical field and she built a house in Vegas ground up. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to take Cameron, you know, with me to Vegas. Mm -hmm. And so I went to drop Cameron off at Drew's mother's house because Drew was living with his mother before he moved in with April. And um, (laughs) was that shade? No, it's true. (laughs) And so I went to drop Cameron off to Drew's mom. And Cameron excitedly said to his grandma, who he refers to as mom, mom's, you know, mommy's taking me to Vegas. We're going to go see Mimi, which is my grandma. And she said, well, are there going to be any kids there? That's what she says to me. And I said, well, my best friends live there and Cameron is close to their kids. So she turns to Cameron and says, well, Cameron, don't you want to go up north with us? Because, you know, your cousin so-and-so is going to be there and -and so-and-so is going to, oh, yeah, mom, please, can I go, can I go, can I go? So I'm side-eyeing her like, really? So but he, go ahead, baby. So he goes up north. F- he goes the, up north so for the Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Now, okay, now Christmas is whose turn? Is how Christmas works. Because Christmas, he was in the snow. <laughs> he says to me, I'm taking Cameron to the snow. It's my year for holidays. I said, no, you're not. Because that's not how it works. Last year, I had Cameron on Christmas Eve. You had him on Christmas Day. It was my week. And you kept him because he wanted to stay with you. Because during the, the school breaks, we let Cameron be a little more flexible wherever he wants to go, right? I'm not having it. It's Christmas. This is your year to take Christmas Eve, my year to take Christmas Day. And it actually falls on your week, so you'll take him back Christmas night if you insist. Crickets. I'm taking him to the snow. Okay. 
So I called my attorney and I said, can you please pull our custodial agreement? What no one knows is prior to this, he had been on the run mm -hmm. right before he went to marriage boot camp. I'm talking about on the real run. On the run from the police? Yes. They mm -hmm. had um, knocked on his door. He was selling drugs. Whose door? Because if he didn't have nowhere to live, you said he, he was... Yes. At the, at the holiday time, he was back living with his mom. Okay. So he knocked on his mom's door. No, no, no. The, no. Police... the, the police knocked on his home before he moved back. At his in mom? The... Okay. At his home. Yes. Sheesh. Um, and I actually was calling him to take Cameron for me because I had to film the next day. And I realized, oh, I haven't heard from him. It's nine o'clock. Cam's got school in the morning. I need to double check. He answers the phone all out of breath. So I'm like, what, what was the... he doing out of breath? I said, what the hell? Are you OK? He's like, well, can Cameron hear you? I said, you let me go in the other room. So I give A.D. the look like, you know, keep Cameron away because he's nosy and he's at your house. I go into my guest room. And I'm like, what is going on? I don't know what's going on, but I was sleeping. Then I heard this bang at my door and it's the policeman. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So I grabbed both my phones. I hopped the fence and then I slid down. I cracked my phone. I, I ran down. I don't have my shoes. I ran down to the gas station <laughs> and so-and-so I called so-and-so because he was already on his way over. And so he's about to pull up and, and take me. I'm going to shut my phones off. I'll be in touch. What was all that? The Days little when, fizz? Because he had a dispensary thing. He wasn't doing it right. And he was selling the drugs out of his house. Damn. Where my son lays his head. Okay. So I'm like. So your son is staying at a trap house. He was. Now, Jesus. you know. So with that being said, I had already started to put things in motion to take custody. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I didn't want to kick Drew while he was down. Okay. And so I told my attorney, hold off. Let me find out. He doesn't know what his charges are. I'm confused. Get to Christmas. Christmas comes. <laughs> now he's living with his mom. He's bit, he went on the run. He did marriage boot camp, all this shit. Christmas comes and um, he, I tell my attorney, pull the agreement because we have everything on hand and we're just waiting for him to slip up one more time. So I'm like, pull the agreement. She sends it to me. So I text Drew and I'm like, bam, this is the breakdown of the holidays. Mm -hmm. Crickets. He doesn't say anything. Well, I go to do my week. And this is the week of Christmas. And I go to pick Cameron up. I pick Cameron up. I hate you. This is why I don't want to live with you. This is Cameron talking. To me. I don't want to live at your house. When you take me back to my dad, I'm never coming back. And you're trying to keep me from him. Bam, 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 bam. So I'm like, where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. So I pull over. I call Drew. I said, he's on Bluetooth. I said, your son can hear you. He said, and I quote, he fucking hates me. He doesn't want to live with me when I drop him back off for you to do your week. He's not coming back. And then I'm trying to keep him from you because I allegedly you told him I said he can't go to the snow. But let's break this down for our son. You and I are friends. OK, mommy and daddy love you, Cameron. Drew, do we agree on this? And he's like, yes, I never told him. Bam, bam, bam. And I'm like, at the end of the day, that's how he interpreted it. And we both know that I've never kept Cameron from you or any member of your family for any reason. And I've had very good cause to do so recently, but I don't. So I said, Cameron, wherever you want to go for the holiday, where mom, whether it's with me, whether it's with daddy, we just want you to be happy and we want you to have the best Christmas ever. So he went with Drew. I'm going with my dad to the snow. Okay. Well, like, when do you find out there in Chicago? Christmas Eve. Or actually, no, the night of the 23rd, the, the day that they left. I never knew what time they were leaving. Well, I look at my clock. I'm prepping greens for Christmas Eve. And I'm like, um, I haven't heard from my son. So is the post that you posted on Instagram, because I want to get to that, right? So when you guys are having it out on Instagram, who initiated that? Was it you that went public with it and why? So she, <clears throat> at this point, Cameron has called me and he's he was hiding from me behind a door. And I was like, what the hell? But on we FaceTime. were on FaceTime. Okay. And so I talked to him. My mom was at my house and I, I talked him down and whatever. And so I said, well, how was your flight? And he said, and I said, where, you know, did you see the snow? There was no snow. This is how this all came to be public and why. There was no snow. When we got off the plane, it melted. It wasn't there. And I said, Cameron, that's not how snow works, baby. You don't, it doesn't melt and then just come back. Like, <laughs> So I talked. So did you know immediately where he was at? Once he said Chicago, because I know April's from Chicago. Mm -hmm. But what what made you immediately know that they were in Chicago? That he was with April in Chicago? Well, because he does everything with her, and I know about all of it. I just never say anything. You knew you knew that they were together. 
Yeah, I had already known that they had been dating. I already knew that he had gone, Drew had gone from his raided house to his mom's house to now temp- being back and forth between his house, his mom's in April. Why house. he don't have his own house? I don't know. So when I made the comment on social media about um, it couldn't, you know, be my baby daddy's hand because he's in Chicago with April and the kids, right? Again, one of those moments where no one's paying attention to the back and no one knows the backstory. My son has now felt the need to hide and lie. I've had to talk him down, at, you know, just so he could feel comfortable. Not so I can know, but, was but he so lying he didn't feel like he, he had was, to hide. You think he was lying because uh, Fizz and April wanted him to lie or he knew that was the expectation that he didn't share? I think that he, um, well, when we finally pulled it, got it out of him, my mom and I, he said he thought that I didn't want him around April because of what happened between Daddy and Uncle O. I don't even know what transpired between these two men. How does my nine-year-old know? And why is he worried about that mm-hmm. at nine? So if Uncle O was Uncle O, then that's Auntie Mama, Mama April. That's, that would be Auntie April, yeah. But now she's his stepmom. Ish. Stepmomish, yeah. And so, okay, so now they're playing house in Chicago on a weekend that was supposed to be shared with you. Uh-huh. You found out. You go live on Instagram. She then respond. Did Wrong. you? Is that one? I made the comment in my my comments. Okay. And then um, I saw people starting to go in on April, and and my baby daddy. So I'm like, what the hell did I miss? At the time, I wasn't following either one of them, mm-hmm. and they weren't following me either on mm-hmm. social media. And so I go to both pages, both stories. So I'm thinking, well, maybe she was live or he was live. They saw the kids, whatever. That's what, where my brain went. So I'm like, it couldn't, it's, you guys, stop asking me. And I didn't even address anyone in particular. I just put it in there because they were asking so fucking much. You guys, stop asking me. It's not his hand. It couldn't be his hand. Even if I wanted it to be, he's in Chicago with April and the kids. Boom. You said that. That's all I said. Okay. When did we get to you saying she sells her pussy? Because you did say that. That was after I went live. I don't know nothing. That, I don't even know after, how you put a tag on it, but apparently. It was after I had gone live. She had gone live. We had gone live together. And she kept questioning me. What is, this is when I, this is when I had deduced that they were sleeping together. <laughs> Prior to that, I didn't need, that thought honestly was, didn't cross my mind because I thought they're not that dumb. Whatever what, this when is, when you say they're not that dumb, why, what do you mean dumb? Because she's anti April. Right. And, 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 and she has two kids by, your baby daddy's bandmate. Right. And, and they've already, B2K's already broken up once and broke hearts all over the world. It would be no way they would let a woman get in between them. Well, it wasn't just that. It was just like, I mean. Betrayal. Yeah. They they would never. So you Like, I gave them more credit than they were, yes. actually, than they were actually worthy of. Like, so they the, would never sleep with each other. So them no. being in Chicago together, there was no thought in no. your head that they were, no. that this was a relationship Mm-mm. in the making. No. Okay. And did you consider yourself a friend of April's at the time? Not at that time. We weren't enemies. We had begun to cordial. build a friendship okay. prior to that. Mm-hmm. But people also tend to forget the picture of April and my baby daddy that surfaced in Mexico surfaced in 2017. Mm-hmm. Well, I've heard since and all they, this has come And out. it wasn't just uh, friendly. It was her bumping and grinding and this and that. One of April's really good friends actually slept with my baby daddy back in the day. So I know a lot more than they think I know. So did, okay, so when you say she was selling her pussy, get unpack that for me, please. Because mm, people so don't, don't understand. We like, were on, she and I were on live and she kept questioning me. I kept saying, my issue's not with you. I didn't say anything bad about you. I haven't disrespected you. I actually like you. We were friends at one point. Well, I'm just trying to figure out what your issue is with your baby daddy and da da da. Meanwhile, I'm not knowing my son is in the room. She's wow. letting my son listen to all of this. Wow. And so my son starts texting me, mommy, please stop before you go to jail. Then I got a voice note. Why are you going in on April? She's so nice to me and she's nice to my dad and she hasn't done anything to you. You're going off on her. And I'm like, OK, bitch, this is where I cross the line. So this is what I've heard. From people that know you. And this is what I know about my baby daddy. He the but things she, I said about the pussy and the things I said about the uh, the bruises on my son, facts. And recently, my mother had to check April and let her know Mon- we would never have wanted Moniz to go that far because there are children involved. But she, what she's not known to do when she's in a like a moment, she's not lying. What she posted was absolutely true. So you you know that she sells her vagina. I didn't say she sells. I said I know of a couple of niggas that hit. 
and we're paying her bills. And that is true. And now we know that my baby daddy was one of those people. But why was he paying her bills if he didn't even have his own place? <laughs> he had bread, I guess. The tour was oh, the doing tour great. Was you know, he did marriage boot camp. Um, okay, wait. So. Marriage boot camp. I'm confused. He with, went who on was marriage. He with? With, yeah, who was he with on marriage boot camp? He was with my girlfriend's ex best friend, Tiffany Campbell, and oh. she and I have also made peace. That I've made resolu- yeah. I've come mm-hmm. to resolve okay. peace with a lot of people. So they did marriage boot camp while he was on the run. Yes. <laughs> How did y'all go from that to friends? Because it seemed so like y'all became down, friends. We, we sit down and we talk, and I just flat out took accountability. I said it. I did hear it. I didn't just pull it out the sky or my ass. I've never known you to be that way. I've never seen it. So you're right. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have run with what I heard. Um, And I explained to her why I felt the way I did around the holiday time. And I tried to get her to understand that when it comes to my son, there's not a petty bone in my body. But this meaning is, the co-parenting, I didn't make that comment about the hand to be petty. But here's I don't where, play behind but here's my where child. I, here's where I, here's why I guess I want to unpack. Don't you feel like at a certain level, like you're betraying me, so now let's handle it. I mean, because there's some lines you just don't cross. There's some lines you just don't cross. So if you guys are not going to be conscious and aware, I will be. So I'm sorry for making the comment about the guys sleeping with you for it to for them to pay your bills. Okay, but what I'm not. But you're gonna, saying it was a fact. I was, that is what I was told, yes. Okay. Um, and so, but what I'm not gonna do is apologize for the statement that I made about my son's father because it was true. And it was very traumatic for my son and that is why my son feels like he has to lie. When my son came home with the bruises, he said he couldn't tell us because his dad told him that if he did, I was gonna take him away from him. Well, who put the bruises on him? His dad. Wow. So, you know, there are, again, a lot of moving parts and so that is why I'm doing the best. I would, it, when the news broke about them being in a relationship, I wasn't shocked. I already knew this. Mm-hmm. But again, people think I'm in love with my baby daddy. I am not. I want you to be conscious. Conscious of the fact that we have this beautiful boy who's struggling emotionally right now. Why on God? If you want to be with whoever, be with wh- whoever right but don't include the babies you live where you live she lives where she lives and you guys link up and do what you do during your off weeks right until you really figure out what the hell is going on and is it worth putting the kids through it now when you can't do that i was totally fine i'm smart I'm way smarter. We got April and I were able to make peace because we had that conversation. I said, I'm putting together a real tour. And when I say real, I'm not selling out huge arenas, right? But I've been really focused on my music. And it did really well. And I feel like that was an affirmation from me that for that I'm doing. So I'm like, let's go, let's get on the road. Like our we don't need to beef. My issue's not with you. It's my baby daddy. I apologize. She apologized. Let's get to the bag, right? I knew but still she wasn't she, but, ready. But still she wasn't owning that they were in a relationship and she no. wasn't being forthright honest. And she wasn't, and I didn't care. Did mm-hmm. you not feel some sense of betrayal that there was no conversation? I don't feel betrayed. Betrayal is we were friends. My baby daddy and I, we're friends. Me and April, we're friends. And we're all doing stuff together and da 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 And then this, right? I don't feel betrayed. She and I, were not best friends. He and I barely fucking speak, right? I'm not buddy buddy with O. I have no stake in the situation. I have nothing to lose, nothing to gain. Just my child, right? Protect that. And I don't really trust him to do that. So I think people really need to understand that's the crux of my issue. I don't trust you to emotionally do what's best for him. So at the end of the day, I have a lot of reservations around that. And so April was cool all while they were maintaining best friendship. But the minute they came out, it was grounds to disrespect me. April showed up to my house 1030 at night. No announcement, no nothing to bring me my son's book for summer school, which is and my baby daddy drove her. I'm going to say, just make a comment, like, from the outside looking in, (laughs) this shit is incestuous like a motherfucker. Like, out of all the people, all the guys in the entire world (laughs) for her to end up with, and I don't know April at all. I have no dog in the race at all. Me and you were just meeting. I am literally a fucking bystander. But what 
the entire you know, fuck. Well, I know well, so well, confused. Well, the other T though. Jason the, might know this, but I don't. I don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. What makes their relationship so off-putting for me is that April and O broke up. They fell out. Whatever. Right. From what I know, <laughs> and I know a lot. Uh, to be factual, from what I allegedly factually know, uh, he did not pursue a friendship with April until he and O fell out. See, I see a lot of people like, oh, that's your best friends. They're not friends. They don't So do you speak. think he just fucked for uh I think that revenge? initially, I think initially that was their common ground. That was their bonding. To I her, think, oh. Yeah, I think the, between, uh, correct. I think that they got together and it was like, revenge fucking? No, not revenge fucking. I don't think it was, I honestly don't think it was that in the beginning. I think that they bonded over, they had a common disdain. We just had Black China here where we were saying that Rob's disdain for the family in the show and her disdain for Tyga and Kylie that potent that the that people thought was that ground. was what brought them together right. and that's okay so now the word on the street because you know hollywood unlock tries to keep its ear <laughs> is that omarion i mean i'm sorry april and fizz have now moved in your neighborhood yes <laughs> so y'all neighbors so <laughs> they're yes. her neighbors so they're yeah they live like um <laughs> really close to me i guess and uh my son points and he goes you know my dad um and april they just God, bought a house right here and April has the pictures you should text her she'll show them to you and I was like okay Cam, maybe if Cam, later if Cam needs a job for the summer please tell him to come work for Hollywood Unlocked <laughs> so I'm like oh that's really good do you like it and you know he's like we haven't moved in yet and it has a basketball court because the people at April's house they're coming sooner than she thought so we had to settle on this house what do you mean the people coming to her house I don't know if she was like renting and possibly like they sold it maybe they closed escrow I was trying to put it all together We're without Probing. I don't think they got evicted. I think that maybe whoever was supposed to be moving in and was moving in sooner than expected, they had to hurry. And so I think, too, that he's now, you know, once I came out and said that, the other day I said to Cameron, as we're passing by the same street that we pass by every day, all, all the time, I'm like, Cam, which one is the actual street? I don't know. It's none of my business. You need to ask my dad because I don't know. It's none of my business. And you need to ask him. I said, oh, so in my mind, I'm like, they didn't wow. give this nigga a whole script. So does he so back to hiding so has from he, mom? Has wow. he has was he talking like that to you before this whole? No. OK, so word on the street is that Cam's going to have a little brother or sister. Allegedly, the April's mm-hmm. pregnant. I don't know her to what? be pregnant. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did call her to say, heard you got a baby on the way. She said, ah, not true. But I also asked her on this show. We asked her on the show. If she and Fizz were in a relationship or after the show and she said, no, that was a lie. Do you know that she's pregnant or not pregnant? Mm. <laughs> My mom called Drew and um, he denied the pregnancy. Period. Space. New sentence. In which my mother then you catch i said he denied the pregnancy and um then my mother but he denied that it was his or he denied that he she was denied pregnant? the pregnancy and then my mother basically said you know you've lied about everything so we don't believe you and what do you think this will mean for your son emotionally mm-hmm. he then said that he had spoken to omari and we found out that that too was a lie they have not spoken um and they he then alleged that i was the only one making a big deal out of it and um no one else cared that's all i got but do you really care no did you reach out I, to him and ask him if he was having a baby on no the i didn't reach out and ask i said i know you're having a baby and so i've kept my hands to myself but if you send your <laughs> bitch back to my property without letting me know <laughs> I might tase her. What's the ideal situation? Because then she'd be trespassing. Wait, what's the ideal situation with this? Because he's saying, your son is saying, our house, as in he's already living there. They, with- are, they have moved in. They have done the furniture shopping. Mm-hmm. So they're a family. In they the- are a family. And he said, and this is a direct quote, I like, well, my, li- I like my living arrangement. I like where I live. And I like my living So do you feel April and Fizz are turning your kid against you? I don't feel that they're turning him against me. It's again that moment of making him feel like he cannot be honest with his mother. But isn't that betray? Isn't that betray? Listen, there are certain ways to handle things. See, he's never going to tell you this part. When we had the first scenario like that, where my son's physical safety was compromised, right? By who? His father. My father said, hey, this is not how this goes. 
So the whole family is going to be waiting for you at Monisa's house, and you can come over and you can tell your son Wait, in so front of his mother that if anyone should ever hurt him, harm him, he should be able to tell anyone in his family this is his safe place, what? no matter who it is. And then you need to apologize to your son for making him feel like he needed to lie to his mother. Because if you're hurting him, we will take him. Wait, but everybody feels like Fizz is a good dad, including me. I've said publicly Fuck a good dad. that. No more protecting him. That I, he, he was not awarded custody because he's dad of the motherfucking century. He was awarded custody because me and my mom fell out and my mom lied on me. The, how about this? So he's an abusive I father, you're to, saying? I'm saying that he's not conscious. And what I will say is this. Let's back up all the way to the beginning. 